welcome to showmethecurry.com. I'm Anuja. And I'm Hithal. And today we're starting our Thai cuisine series. Yummy. So we're going to start off first by mm -hmm. making a basic red curry paste and a pretty simple recipe. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple recipe, like Hithal mentioned. We picked up some dry red chili from uh, the Oriental store. And what we did was we took it and uh, we de-seeded it and we soaked it in hot water, about a third of a cup, and this is about 20 red chilies. Mm -hmm. So it's been soaking for about 30 minutes now. They're nice and soft, so mm -hmm. we're going to keep them aside for now. So one of the basic ingredients in a lot of Thai cooking is uh, called galangal. It's um, kind of similar to ginger, but it's got mm -hmm. a lot milder flavor and taste, and uh, it's very hard. It, you know, unlike ginger, you can cut through it easily. This takes a, a little bit of effort to do that, but um, it has this really wonderful flavor, and uh, ginger can be substituted, but you know, if you can find galangal, then that would be the way to go. It's really hard, and uh, since we're going to be grinding all of this, you can just take a sharp knife and just shred it, a little, peel it, and then just shred it like this, so that uh, thin strips. It's just easier for your blender that way. So we have about one heaping tablespoon of the shredded galangal here mm -hmm. that we're going to use. Okay, and the next ingredient that goes in is shallots. Now shallots is, uh, kind of looks like an onion, uh, but the unique th thing about shallots is it's got two, you know, it, if you open it up, peel it up, it's got, it divides into two. Amazing. But, um, it's got, it's a lot stronger than red onions. So, you know, a little bit takes you a long way. <laughs> yeah, we have about half a cup of uh, shallots. We've just chopped fine. And our next uh, key ingredient is called lemongrass. This is how it comes when you pick it up in the store. It, it'll come in a bunch like this. And uh, what we've done is basically we've removed, we've taken one of the stalks, we've removed the outer hard covering that's there. Mm -hmm. And you can feel it, it feels like paper almost. You can take that off and uh, you know you come to a nice smooth one. And then we've again shredded it into small discs like this. And this is about two tablespoons of this lemongrass. Mm -hmm. The next is one that we all recognize. It's a cilantro or coriander. So this is what it looks like. So all you've done is you've of course washed it and you've removed the leaves. So you remove the leaves, you're not going to use them for this paste. And then we just going to just fold it in and we'll just chop it. So again, it's going to be minced, but when you chop it fine, it's easier to measure. And this is about uh, two tablespoons. Next, we have about a quarter cup of chopped garlic key ingredient but very flavorful and very pungent mm -hmm. makes the paste and the next is needs no introduction <laughs> it's the Thai red chili and this combined with the dry red chili is where you get the color bulk of the color from so we are going to use a few of this but if you don't want it very spicy and uh, you just want the flavor but not extreme spice you can always substitute this and reduce that and you can add in paprika. Of course, paprika has its own flavor, but you know, this is where your bulk of your flavor is coming from. So, we're gonna use about five of them, five, six of them, mm -hmm. so. Sounds good. And finally, now if you have an Asian store nearby and you can find lime leaves, that would be the perfect mm -hmm. ingredient for yeah. this paste. And you only need a, a few of them, you know, three, four of the lime leaves. But unfortunately, they are a little bit difficult to find, but we have a good substitute. We've taken a regular lime and our peeler, and we're just going to peel off the very outer shell of this lime. And you don't want to dig down too deep because the white inside is very bitter. So you want to get it as thin as possible mm -hmm. and break it off. And we have about four or five of these peels and that's also going to get ground up in there. And lastly we're going to put in white pepper, whole pepper and it pretty much looks like black pepper but it's white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's going to be one teaspoon of that. And of course we have salt. You're going to need, uh, really it's to taste but uh, if you're going to keep this paste for a while you wanted to preserve it, we're going to try about a teaspoon of salt and then see if we need any more. So like we said, very simple. We have a blender over here, a little one, and we're going to just put everything in that and just blend it. Now the chilies are soaking in a third of a cup of water. Now our blender is super good. 
it blends without any additional water but if yours does not and you do need to add water use the water from yeah. there so bottom line is you want to use as less water as possible so we're going to not need it so we're going to just stick to what we have and in go goes everything So our paste is nice and finely ground. This is what it looks like, and it's so beautiful. It's nice and red. And uh, like I just said, if you can't handle the heat or you're making it for your children, then uh, you'll probably get a paste that is not so red. If you you know use less chilies, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, pink. Yeah. And at that point, you know it's okay to use your paprika to color it up a little. Right. I mean the flavor is there. You right. know, that's the bottom line. You're looking for the flavor. The color may be a little off, but that's okay. It tastes good. Absolutely. Yeah. So over here we have a skillet, a flat skillet with three tablespoons of oil heating up on medium heat. And it's hot. So we're going to add the paste to this very carefully. Look at the color, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And actually that hot oil is just going to intensify that color. Mm -hmm. And mix. So we are basically cooking it for two reasons. One is of course to cook it so it's ready to use and the second more important reason is it's a preservative. It's going to preserve it. So if you have used any water to make the paste, it all gets evaporated and it's done with. So if you're done cooking it and everything is ready to go, you want to let it cool down, put it in a jar, stick it in your fridge mm -hmm. and you can have Thai food every night. <laughs> Now we're basically going to cook it till it um, basically the raw flavor needs to go and uh, like Indian food the oil will separate. Be sure you keep stirring it. So I have been religiously stirring it. I made sure all the liquid has gone, evaporated and see it's kind of lumps up now. It's kind of, it's not as flowy as it was. Mm -hmm. It's more, you know, it's got more, it holds more shape. So great indication, everything is gone, all the oil is absorbed and all the moisture is gone. So turn off the stove and just transfer it into a bowl and just let it cool down. So this is so beautiful and I wish you guys could smell this because it is heavenly. heavenly. Mm. <laughs> Yum. Good choice of wood. <laughs> yeah. So this much uh, quantity will mm. probably make you about three to four dishes which are about you know, servings for four. Right. And uh, it's all gonna depend on how spicy you like things and how flavorful you want it. So if, you, if you're if you like intense, then you might, you know, use it for two times. <laughs> so whatever you don't use, be sure you get a nice clean and dry jar with a good lid on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, just put that in there and it can uh, stay in the refrigerator for at least a month or two. It'll right. be fine in there. So stay tuned for some dishes that we're gonna use this paste for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be red curry. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show that to you coming up next. And join us again on another episode of showmethecurry.com. Adding a pinch of spice to your life.